On today's episode, I'm joined by Marketing Director Neil Davies, and we are coming at you from the Dallas Safari Club Convention in Dallas, Texas. Our guest on the show, Donald Trump Jr. We start the conversation discussing what got Don into hunting and shooting. We talked about his dive into the art and science of long-range shooting, and we finish up talking about his involvement in the media company Field Ethos. We had a great chat with Don, and we think you'll enjoy it. I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on this episode of the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik, and we're coming to you from the Dallas Safari Club Convention here in Dallas, Texas. To my left, Marketing Director Neil Davies, and to my right, special guest, Don Trump Jr. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Good to be here, man. Yeah, thanks for coming, Don. This is great. Yeah, it is great, and I love coming to this convention specifically. It's the first one of the year for us, and it's direct-to-consumer. You get the consumer of your product at this show, and you get to interact with them and hear the stories and the pictures and the videos and the recovered bullets, and it's just really cool to interact that way. 100%. Yeah. Not always awesome, but walking the floor for me gets to be a real pain. Yeah, because every yeah, it's gotta. Yeah, I gotta basically keep my eyes low and just keep walking, and I dress like crap on purpose because it's like it, this yeah. is what I call it, you know, shot show floor uh, camo. Yeah, uh, they don't they don't recognize it as much, but I you know, I guess the only thing worse than taking selfies is when people stop asking. So, yeah, for yeah. people gotta, that don't know that, obviously, you know, you walk anywhere near Don, and there's people, everybody's lined up to take photos and selfies. He's trying to go look at guns or new products mm-hmm. and things like that. And or do business. Yeah, yeah. just do business, yeah. and you got to roll over and take selfies. look like the gray man. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. No, that's subtle. good. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's impressed me about the industry and about Hornady specifically is, you know, when, when I look at, like, my life, for example, as a consumer of our product, I'm just a hayseed from Nebraska. So it's it's a natural thought for me that I would end up being a Hornady customer, shooting our bullets and our ammunition. But what I've really, really appreciated is worldwide, the different walks of life and the different people that are Hornady customers that are just as passionate about the bullets and the ammunition or reloading tools as I am. And that's really cool. And so with that in mind, you know, Don, I know nothing of your background, but how's, how did you get into hunting? What drew you to it? Uh, I sort of got into the outdoors pretty young. My grandfather was from sort of blue-collar communist Czechoslovakia, and he was just, you know, blue-collar guy there, saw the lifestyle that, uh, you know, we were blessed with in America, but also wanted to make sure I saw the other side. So he took me over there uh, for a month every summer, and it was like, you know, there's the woods, I'll see you at dark. You couldn't hunt there. That was not, you know, that was not for regular people okay. over there in that part of the world, you know, at the time. And, uh, but just sort of fell in love with the outdoors uh, that way. Uh, Went to boarding school in central Pennsylvania pretty young in eighth grade. A couple guys took me under their wing and take me, you know, opening day, Pennsylvania, deer oh, yeah. season, you know, talking oh, yeah. bullets. And it was, yeah. uh, you know, it, but I just, I fell in love, read every book there was the second I could drive. It, you know, took it to the next level, but, you know, got in, I mean, an old school kind of place, had a rifle range on campus. Nice. Uh, you oh, know, started wow. shooting a lot of small bore and stuff like that. Got, um, you know, just whatever an opportunity presented itself i just always took it so you oh. just you just you were interested yourself and you yeah i just I fell in love with the uh, basically self-taught so yeah uh that you know encourage everyone whether it's shooting hunting or whatever like be a mentor to someone else because it's just not easy to get into by yourself yeah. i yeah. i was blessed because i was obsessed yeah but it took like years you know i look at my son i'm like you lucky bastard yeah <laughs> that's right. like he's shooting stuff at his age that i it, i'd never even yeah, you so did you get existed. your did yeah. you get your brother into the game then too? Yeah, my brother got into the you know the same way. He's you know he's super into it. Um, you know I do so, I do more hunting uh, you know than he does. But I mean he machines his own guns and stuff like that. He yeah. literally builds. Oh, he know, went his, real deep. Oh no no he he's literally a machinist. He'll he's making you know sub quarter minute like insane yeah. guns. He's a great shooter, uh, great reloader. So we you know we do all of that and then you know. I drag on him on on some of my some of the hunts that I do, and uh, but he, no, he's super into it. That's and awesome. that I think you know a lot of people may not understand that about you guys, but I mean you are hardcore, passionate users of these products. I oh mean, yeah, no, it's it's what I do. I mean, uh, yeah, you don't just play that guy it. on TV or something like no, that. Well, is, we, when you guys were building, you know, the original, you know, six five Creedmoor. Well, Dennis Demille was one of my yeah. very close friends, shooting mentor. I used to shoot uh, on a team with him. You know, competitive high power. Like, you know, before it was like Sammy Speck, we were playing with, uh, you know, that round, 
back before anyone, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, no, we're super we, – we've gone way down the rabbit hole on all yeah. that stuff. Well, that's a great point to if, – if you're out there and you're listening and you have the ability to mentor somebody, just, just grab them and do it because you never know, you know, wh- what their walk of life is going to be or where they're coming from. But anybody – can benefit from just getting in the outdoors whether you're shooting or not yeah. like you said growing up just going out into the woods and enjoying just being outdoors and then you marry it you know it sounds like in pennsylvania which as a state the hunter participation yeah. in in pennsylvania is great so there's a bunch million of man stuff. army right yeah. isn't that the story <laughs> yeah it's great i mean you know i have a farm up there still uh you know now with my brother and a couple friends and like you know they're guys you know, running beagles for rabbits and stuff like yeah. that. Just like cool stuff that's just, you know what I mean? Like classic. Just the, the, the classic, really, you know, fun stuff. So, uh, no, it's, it's great. It's also kept me out of a lot of other trouble. Not You're well, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that will do that. I was kind of in that same boat as well. So it sounds like not just hunting, but also the competitive shooting you got yeah. into as well. Used to do a lot of that, uh, you know, high power and shoot with a lot of guys. You know, I, I don't do as much match stuff anymore because it's sort of the same thing. Like, it just ends up. Yeah, it, you came you know, out there with being Dennis, like, and was Arlie Ermy part of that mix then uh, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know Carl Bernowski. Yeah, some Carl, really, sure. You know, great yeah. guys, and so I used to go out there all the time. And you know, I met Dennis. I ordered something from you know Creedmoor Sports, and he's like, "Oh, if you ever want to learn to shoot, I'm like, who the hell's this guy?" I'm like, yeah. oh, you know, you know, <laughs> okay, oh, who is yeah. that? Oh, he guy? won Camp Perry a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah he's, he's okay at the shooting. So, you know, so yeah. it, it is. And Dennis was you know, captain of the Marine Corps rifle team at the time, and like, you know, I was like, okay, it's like really, like you're gonna come? It's like, yeah, it's like. Well, there's a really, you know, five-star hotel about an hour away. I was like, do you have anything closer? Like, we're going to go shoot matches Did you or stay at the pond? No, I stayed on his couch. And oh. like, so he was just like, oh, that's weird. We just sort of became uh, yeah. you know, uh, lifelong friends. That's great. Oh, that is yeah. awesome. And now going back to hunting, uh, when did the, like, big game hunting, let's say, you know, deer, antelope, and, and yeah. as that grew, when did that start for you? You know, I, I, like I said, that was sort of like uh, high school, you know, mm-hmm. boarding school, like, started you know, go with me your first like pheasant walk up and mm-hmm. you're doing that kind of stuff and then trying desperately and you know pennsylvania you know <laughs> do the public land thing that wasn't always easy and but you know sort of late teens okay you know, got it. once i could drive yeah mm-hmm. then, then it was dog. like you know i would uh you know in the summer i'd work two months and then i'd take you know three weeks off a month off and literally just drive out west by myself you know that a lot of that was going to be for fishing just because the really? hunting seasons and everything like that but just like live out of my truck for a month well, that's cool. like all over yeah. the west you know fly fishing and hiking into yeah. the middle of nowhere and uh, you know, uh, hunting everything in Africa and just, I, I went down the rabbit hole. So yeah, that's good. complete immersion from yeah. a young age. And I feel like that's a, a very shared trait amongst all of us that certainly that work at Hornady, especially, you know, in the product development side of things, it's yeah. just complete immersion in the shooting sports, competitive hunting, you know, really all the way around. And I'm really impressed, uh, that you dove that deep into competitive shooting and got tutelage from like a legendary shooter. Yeah, so it was, it was great. Like, it, I, you know, my name probably got me in the door because it was like, just, I think the guy was just curious, but then right. it actually, you know, it, it worked pretty well. I'm just, you know. That's, it, it, that's it was, awesome. We had a lot of fun with that. The 22 Advanced Rifle Cartridge easily outperforms all other 22 caliber cartridges in its class, producing 22 250 performance in an AR-15 platform. The 22 Arc is engineered to take full advantage of the most aerodynamic 22 caliber bullets. This means tighter groups, increased accuracy, and an exceptional shooting experience. 22 Advanced Rifle Cartridge from Hornady. So from there, you know, you, you've got your start, you're, you're going out west on adventures, um, and then as you get more and more hunts under your belt, did you have any natural affinity to a certain cartridge or a certain bullet that you really were drawn to? You know, some people like, oh, 30 out 6 or 300 Win Mag or 270. Yeah. Did you have any of those early on? I, I, you know, it sort of started off with, the, you know, the classic, you know, 30 out 6. You know, Can't go it, wrong. You know, Remington 700, you know, that started it, and then... As I got more into you know, ballistics and precision, you know, now I got everything from, you know, literally like 17 CCMs, like stuff that, you know, <laughs> Never like, existed. You know, my buddy had the only barrel of brass ever made for this stuff, yeah. you know what I mean, all the way, you know, to 50 BMG. So I, I got everything in between, like, uh, and I've definitely gone down the rabbit hole in a lot of different disciplines and stuff like that. So, you know, a couple years with like bench rest, yeah. you know oh, what I mean, yeah. a couple years with F class. Yeah, like, little you know, handgun stuff. Or, now I sort of, I like, I really like sort of PRS style shooting, cause oh, yeah. it, you know, it, I just it, it translates a lot well. It works out really good for hunting as well. Yeah, it does. 100%. You know, I, don't, I don't shoot my matches really anymore because I, I I don't often have the time to commit three days and travel and yeah. whatever it is to do yeah. it. But I, a lot of those guys uh, and some of the top shooters in that world are just good buddies of mine. So when they're in an area, we'll go do practice days and 
Like you know, Robert Brantley, maybe? Yeah, like, you know, Rob Brantley, you know, one of the finest you know, human yeah. beings yeah, alive. Yeah, he's a just great the, guy. The sweetheart of a guy. So, yeah, Rob's a close friend. And then, you know, go down the ELR uh, rabbit hole. That's another one that, you yeah. know, just like, I mean, it, it's so much. But what's sort of amazing, you know, what's, you know, short range, mid range today was like yeah. ELR Unheard, 20 years of, ago. Yeah, you know, yeah, like I was shooting, you know, at Williamsport in Pennsylvania, you know, the thousand yard, the original sort of, you know, when we were shimming bases you know, 25 yeah. years ago. Like fifteen years before long range was even cool or like a thing, yeah. uh, you know. So uh, I, I got lucky. Just met a lot of awesome people that were sort of leaders in that field that took me under their wing, and you know, we, we have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I just think it's a fantastic story because most people grow up with this. You know, somebody in their family does it. Your grandpa, somebody yeah. like that. I mean, I had a similar story, and my father didn't hunt none of that stuff. So I mean, there was a family friend that I hung out with, and. Man, it just kindled a passion, and I, I, I assume that it's just kind of built into people. Mm -hmm. Like, my kids yeah. didn't have a choice. I mean, your kids yeah. didn't have a choice. You're going to get exposed to it. They can gravitate to it or not, yeah. Yeah. but you're going to get... Yeah, you know, two of my sons, I got three sons and, you know, five kids, but, you know, two of my sons are just, like, super into it. Like, yeah. just, you know, all over the place, you know, and uh, one is not that much into it, but now he's starting to add, and they all picked it up different. My oldest son, at, like, three, was like, Dad, Dad, take me hunting, take me hunting. Yeah, he's ready he to roll. He can sit blind, like, freezing his ass off for... Nine hours. Yeah, like, yeah. He's like, I was like, well, let's go in and warm up. I'm trying to give him the out. You know, I did. Well, finally, they get, Dad, like, how are we going to shoot a deer if we're, we're inside warming up? Like, yeah, I'm like, it's not going to okay. work out. You know, yeah. like, we got to go. It, it was sort of, he always was into it. The other one was totally, would not have had the, you know, the attention for it. Yep. And, uh, you know, but then slowly but surely, and now that kid's just like, hey, Dad, can we go up to the lease and go shoot a pig? I'm like, we're going to drive five hours to shoot a pig and come back like really like okay like yes we'll go do that but yeah. like because you have to get them into it <laughs> yeah, you nurture right. it when, yeah. when they want yeah. it you got to give it to them it's sort of like you gotta you're make training it fun. a dog you gotta you yeah. gotta give them a little bit but also pull them away when they're still having fun yeah that's you know, right don't, yeah. don't overdo it yeah, yeah. end uh, on a positive note go do something fun yeah, yeah absolutely. but yeah the mentor thing is 100 percent right because it's easy if you have a kid and you're into it to, to get them into it but we need to get more people into the game yeah uh, and you can always take like you know, all right so your kids have friends and maybe they don't hunt or don't yeah. you know like even hey, shooting though you, yeah, you know it's just you know it's just fun yeah it's not like you can go you know buy a tennis rack and go take a let you know shooting's a little bit more yeah. in intimidating so you got to get other people into the game because mm -hmm. that's how we're going to preserve the legacy it's how we're going to get keep people to keep going and that's also how it's going to help frankly you know i know we're not really going political but like that's how we're going to keep our rights if there's enough people that actually believe in that oh, as yeah. opposed to if it becomes a numbers game and five percent of the people are very passionate guess what they'll figure out a way how to get rid of it and the fun them. part about taking somebody shoot like a lot of times you know you'll find somebody that never been around firearms in their life and they're kind of spooky and scary to them and stuff. But then you go out and shoot with them, and they realize it's just a benign machine yeah. oh, that's so that. much more fun. To, and they have a they, smile they on their like face it. from yeah. ear to ear when they're Listen, doing I, it. I, I lived in New York City for most of my life, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, you know, people like, and I have friends, like, vehement, like, the anti-gun. I was like, okay, you know me, you like me, right? Yeah. Give me six hours. Yeah. They're like, no, I don't know. I was, you take them to a range. I, you know, within a, you know, a couple of weeks, these guys are now, they're hunters. Yeah, they're worried to buy this. And, like, what do I, I do? Where, where, I, not one person that I have taken out there was not like, hey, man, like, when can we do that again? Yeah. That, was, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, it's so different than I thought. And, I mean, so that's the importance of actually exposure. Because, like, you, you took people that were literally, like, anti-gun, not because they but because they just had no idea and they're parroting some media talking point yeah. or whatever it is. They, well, they try it and they're like, Oh, this like, is awesome. Oh, this is this is incredible. Like, yeah. What AR-15 should I be buying? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, great. 20 minutes ago, they were all for a band, yeah. and now they're having a blast. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's just important to try to expose different people to it. Yeah, yeah I agree. And again, they always have a smile on their face yeah. when they yeah. do, and it's exhilarating, and it is, and it's fun, and that's one of the things that you know Jason Hornady says is yep. we sell fun. You know, yeah. and there are some oh, you know defense scenarios, and you know the military and law enforcement thing that is serious, of course, but hunting and target shooting. It's fun, yep. and it's, it's a joy to do. We, we bring some, sometimes when folks come to the factory and come to visit us, and from whatever walks of life they might come from, but we always end a tour with some of these folks with the full auto shoot. Oh, yeah. And I can, I can predict how the photo is going to go or the video is going to go. So you film them from the right-hand side, and they bear down, shoot, and then they always end like, yeah. like this, yeah. looking over their yeah. shoulder, giggling. My it's favorite. Fun favorite thing to do in that uh situation is the tommy gun with the drum mag because yeah. yeah. that's you know so iconic and yeah. uh, that is a Classic. lot of fun
The Hornady Rapid Safe Keypad Vault offers quick, dependable access to your firearm while providing security from unauthorized users. The Rapid Safe Keypad Vault is constructed of a heavy duty 14 gauge steel housing and thick steel lid for tamper proof security. The included RFID watch band tag and RFID decal can be selectively programmed to open this safe and any other Rapid Safe you own. The Rapid Safe Keypad Vault from Hornady Security. I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, that was a fascinating story that, that I wouldn't have anticipated, you know, some of your answers to those on how you got into it. But uh, how did you use that passion to morph into what became Field Ethos? And what, was, what, what prompted yeah. that creation and, and what is that? Well, so it's sort of, you know, multimedia, the outdoor company, you know, quarterly uh, print magazine, mm -hmm. you know, sort of heavy online presence and uh, just, it started off basically a couple of guys from all sorts of different walks of life. Uh, one of our partners, a former game warden, a guy that was a SEAL sniper, uh, me, a couple, basically on a text thread. And honestly, it was like, we were talking smack about so much of the garbage in like the outdoor world. You know, it's the same article, you know. 9,476 ways to catch spring bass. It's like, read the art. You know, like it, yeah. they, no one was doing anything exciting. And then yeah, it got, for, formulaic media, basically. Yeah, it was just like, yeah. uh, you know, I was like, I read that article like every spring since I was a child, yeah, you yeah. know, it, and it got boring. The stories, everyone started, they started pulling punches, you know. This is what we were, I'm like, man, like I've been at a lot of campfires all over the world in hunting camp, and like that's not, it's it's not, not a conversation that ever happened that way. Mm. Or like everyone started, you know, well, we had to save the hoof of the elk, and we carved chess pieces out of them because we wouldn't wait. I'm like, stop. Like, you're allowed to hunt for fun. You're allowed, you know, like, it's okay. Yeah. No one's saying the meat's not great. I, I'll say, hey, I, I love elk, but I probably still prefer a ribeye. I don't have to, you know. And, and so we were just sort of literally having these conversations. Like, no one's doing anything fun. Good writing, but witty. Pushing those boundaries. And, like, it, it actually should be a niche that should be swamped. Mm -hmm. in sort of the hunting you know, space because everyone is actually that way. But it wasn't because everyone was so you know, kind of pussyfooting around like, you know, everything to, to appease those who hate us. And so we just took a totally different approach and it, it's just, it's taken off. I mean, people really like... Was Scobie you know, in on these initial no, conversations? No, no, no Scobie a... came in later. It was okay. sort of one of those. I mean, listen, he had, you know, one of the highest positions and let's call it the sort of legacy outdoor media. Yeah. And he saw what we were doing and... Like, we basically didn't think we'd have any chance at actually hiring a, a, a SCOBY. Yeah. Because it was like, well, we're, you know, we're, we're on our first edition of a magazine. And we're, but, he, but he's like, oh, I love what you guys are doing. And so yeah. I was like. Little did you know, that's exactly what he wanted yeah, to do. No, yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so, you know, he came over and he's a wild man. And so we're yeah. honestly just having a good time with it. Awesome. So where, for the listener out there, and they want to consume some of yeah. the stuff that you're talking about, what are the, the avenue streams? So you go to, go to fieldethos.com. There's a cool, you know short story sort of emailer that goes out you know a lot of stuff on you know instagram for just the yeah. pictures jason's and running stuff. social all the yeah. time okay They're doing that it's yeah we have like sort of sunday stories it's just witty funny you know q a type stuff mm -hmm. there it's podcast go to you know fieldethos.com you can check it out there and mm -hmm. you know sign up for the various things the print journals honestly i think the print journal is great it's sort of like uh yeah you know, it's like, like maxim magazine meets uh outdoor yeah but yeah you know not even you know it's not was sort of the opposite of like the put some chick in a bikini with a gun and like yeah, try no, to sell the gun. That. It's like if and by the way, like like thirty something, thirty two, thirty three percent of our following is actually female, oh. which is sort of amazing for like an unabashedly like masculine. But it's like that's what people actually want, you know yeah. what I mean? So it, that's unheard of, I think, in the outdoor space. But it's like mm -hmm. they like the writing. They're okay with being unapologetically masculine. They're sick of you know hanging around neutered guys because everyone's. Uh, so concerned about not offending someone, so we're all about just we'll offend everyone. Yeah, <laughs> equally, yeah, okay. <laughs> equal opportunity. Equal. Yeah, I, I hate everyone. Equally. Yeah, we hate everyone the same. Yeah, that's right. That's awesome. Well, it is definitely a a departure from, like you said, kind of the traditional media, um, and it is you know oddly refreshing. I think, and like you said, I think people just kind of wanted that. They may not have appreciated that they wanted that, but now seeing just that that open and honest side of it it uh, it is intriguing and it is easy to 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 like yeah yeah now we try to have some fun with it and you, i mean again there's some sort of writers who you know that wrote for a lot of the publications and they're like well here it's like no no, no. i've heard that story a thousand times like yeah. give me the story about like when you were like up in a mountain somewhere like and you crapped yourself because like you, <laughs> yeah. you, you ate the wrong thing and it's yeah. like 
you know, and these guys were like, I can't write that. I'm a, no, 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 do it. And they come and they were like, dude, that was so much fun. It was so refreshing. Yeah. Like, it, it, like, give us the embarrassing moment. Everyone, you know, <laughs> yeah. not the time when you, you were the legend. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, so it, it's been off. It's been yeah. a lot of fun. We, you know, cool, cool old journey. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot well of that, and the booth is, is packed full of people today. So yeah, they, they tried throwing them out yesterday. They get a little, <laughs> the <laughs> cops showed up. Uh-huh. They get a little rowdy. And, but again, it, it's sort of like, you know, it, it, it's being around a real campfire. Like yeah. that's, I guess that's how it's designed. Uh, and there's well, an interesting group of people that are hanging out there. Some people oh yeah. that people have seen on TVs, movies, all sorts yeah. of things. So, yeah. And yeah. that's that's a fun part about our industry that, like, it attracts everybody. This yeah. is this is an enthusiast industry, and there's rich guys, poor guys, middle class guys, gals, yeah. people from all walks of life, mm-hmm. bankers, lawyers, whatever, you name it, you know, steel workers, et cetera. So that's fun when you're here and you see people that you might have seen on TV or movies. Yeah. Yep. They like this stuff too. And they're not all closet enthusiasts either. A lot of them are pretty vocal yeah, about that, it. Yeah, it, it, I do a lot with, I know a lot of the closet enthusiasts and I understand it because of the, yeah. you know, cancel, but like just trying to get some of those guys, like if you just even made it a little bit known, yeah. like it, it goes so far to make it okay for others. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we try to get those guys out there and, you know. I, f- I feel like we're, it's a situation and probably in your world in that regard, it's like, is that the emperor has new clothes, you know, like, oh, yeah. we can't speak about these things, even though, hey, I really enjoy shooting, you know. Yeah. We can't, yeah, it's like we need more people to be a little bit more vocal and spread the word. Yeah, yeah. That's well, the thing. and it is so much fun, and it that's a good point, Neil, that, you know, you walk around here and you see somebody, like, that's been on movies or really popular television programs. Or, or, an, or an athlete or whatever, right. you name it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's from all walks of life. Yeah, and so that's cool to see, like, you know, or at the beginning of the podcast I mentioned, I'm just – a guy that grew up in a town of less than 100 people in the middle of nowhere, and to see like all the walks of life that are passionate, not just about our products, of course, but shooting in general, the Second Amendment, hunting, just being outside, doing outside stuff. It's just yeah. great to see. Yeah, the we all speak this lives. language here. Yep. All of us speak yeah. this it's language. It's kind of like a great equalizer and, you know, kind of a giant campfire if, if you think of it that and, way. And today is great. So today's Saturday. So there's little kids all over this place. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's I great. I mean, that's the good thing about Texas. It, it, you know, it, it's just a part of that culture here. Yeah, so it is. It, it is cool to see that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's hilarious. There's kids all over the place. Yeah, I've made it a point, you know, if there's, you know, six, seven-year-old kid out there looking at our stuff, I got to go get him a hat, and he gets a Hornady hat and a little hat pin because yeah. you never know. I, I, I look at, you know, seven-year-old Seth and how cool that would have been to, to be a part of something like this. The Hit Target Impact Indicator. Instant hit confirmation at extended ranges has never been easier. The hit target impact indicator easily attaches to most target stands and not the steel target itself. The highly sensitive internal accelerometer detects vibration when the target is impacted, activating the red LED lights that flash Morse code for hit. Where impact confirmation can be difficult, light it up with the hit target impact indicator from Hornady. So, I mean, like the Dallas Safari Club and Safari Club International, they do so much to promote conservation through hunting. I know that's a big message for you, but that's the reality of this whole situation. A lot of people look at, you know, quote unquote trophy hunting and think it's, you know, just uh, folks out there, you know, fulfilling their fantasies and desires. But so much of that money goes back into the local economies and helps, um, you know, ultimately keep these animals and many other animals alive. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big part of the story. It's it's the story, really. Yeah. You know, I mean, you go to some of these places in Africa where they ban banned hunting, and you realize there's no game, and there's a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I I probably got known in hunting really because someone put pictures of me out there, like you know, in Africa and stuff yeah. like that. And then they, oh my God, you know, the media goes crazy. You know, I was apparently poaching elephant and you know, high fenced elephant in Zimbabwe. You know, I'm like. High fence elephant. Yeah, it, There's it, not a fence that, made. That, that, that doesn't work <laughs> yeah. that way, but it, you know, doesn't stop them from running the story, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, well, here's my license. Here's, here's the letter from Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife, whatever, well, you know. And but also here's the conservation message, and they yeah. they want you to do the. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. Like I, I took the opposite approach. I was like, F you hear the facts, and like it drove them crazy. But yeah. it's sort of how I got a name in hunting. Is I'd all these, I'd go to the show then. That these guys that. Some of them, you know, sort of legendary hunters, like, yeah. hey, man, thanks for doing that. Like, you know, yeah. it got out there, and, like, everyone else does the, you know, they cave and they bow, yeah. I'll never hunt again. I'm like, really? Like, you're never, like, <laughs> it's and never that, happening. And that's important because, yeah. I mean, you look, you're a very notable person, and you could have shirked all that, but yeah. you decided to come out of the, into the mm-hmm. light and, and embrace that. Yeah. You know, that's fantastic because we need a lot more of that. Yeah. I mean, that's, so the elephant thing, I mean, that, for a lot of folks that, you know, this is megafauna and they don't understand, but. 
human beings keep encroaching on on oh, yeah. all the native lands for all these animals and the it can only sustain this many elephants it can only sustain this yeah. many of these and if you keep encroaching on their land unfortunately you don't have enough land for these elephants to live and if you got too many elephants that all they did they knock over trees now you can't have kudus you can't have browsers so i mean it's all interrelated you know yeah. and the conservation through hunting like the dallas safari club is such a huge piece to that uh because you, the dollars, like you mentioned, and it's not just about the animals in some of these areas of the world. The money that goes into those hunting, it's helping all of the, you know, all of the people, all of the support staff, the families, the water availability. There's yeah. so much of that infrastructure. And that, then they're also incentivized absolutely. to keep the animals. Yeah. And they're not poaching or they're turning in the poachers. I mean, it, you know, people don't understand. They say, oh, well, you know, oh, a lion, how could you do that? Or whatever animal it is yeah. that they don't want you hunting. It's like. You realize, like, if, if I'm not, if someone's not there doing that and hunting and there's no money generated, like, it's not like, it is it is a beautiful, majestic animal, but it's much easier to say that from a glass tower in New York yeah, City than it right. is when you walk five miles to the river to try to, you know, get water in Yeah, the because, I mean, those yeah. elephants are going to raid their crops. They're going to encroach yeah. on their lands. Now you got human, elephant conflict, or any other animal Well, but conflict. the reality, what people don't understand is if, if they're not generating something for themselves from these things, well, that it kills one cow in, yeah, in the Maasai, don't. and they'll... they'll They'll poison the cow with lye. The pride will come in. They'll kill all the lions. Yeah. Like they're not going to do anything to protect it if it's incredible. So they're incentivized with the dollars that they're making and it's going yeah. through their communities and that it's being spent there to actually now, okay, mm -hmm. well, fine. We're, we're going to have a little bit of loss here, but we're making it up elsewhere. You know, you, you don't want to think of an animal ever as a, as a commodity, but that's the reality of the world. And yeah. people don't, I think Ivan Carter probably said it best. It's like, you can't always solve third world problems with first world solutions. It doesn't, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. The, yeah. the answer is money. Now, what's your question? Yeah. Yeah. You know, in that regard, that's the unfortunate reality of it. And we, we hunted with a, a guy in Tajikistan, and it is right on the Pond River, and right across the river is Afghanistan. And for years and years and years, they had uh, Markor, and yeah. you know the Markor lived pretty low, and they would just shoot them. Yeah. Shoot them and eat them and do this and that with them. And if you look across, okay, so finally they, they realized that there's worth to these things. The whole community now relies on people coming into that area to hunt mark yeah. or mid-Asian ibex, and they do not poach them. They do, and yeah. they they know where they are. They babysit them and accommodate the folks that come in there to hunt. And the monies from those uh, all these hunters goes to pay for water improvement projects. Oh, yeah. It's not just the outfitter that is that is keeping any of the profits. Mm -hmm. It's going to the entire community, and because also that guy needs them not to go out and shoot these animals. Yeah. And then you look across the river in Afghanistan. And it is just desolate. Everything, there's, there's nothing there. I mean, there's no animals. They've cut all sorts of the... Uh, anything that can burn has been cut down. It's just it's a vastly different scenario. And it is right across the river. Wow. So, again, they have uh, financial reasons to do this. And the man, yeah, he's brilliant. And he brought Markor back from... Uh, near extinction, you know, Near really. extinction in that area, anyway. Yeah. And now, now they have a... I mean, they send me videos all the time of snow leopards. Everybody would yeah. think a snow leopard is something that, you know, will never be seen. But... Because they got Markor, they've got Snow Leopard. So it, wow. it's a fantastic story. Yeah, the story. trickle down effect of hunting through conservation yeah. and for Dallas Safari Club specifically. I know I was uh, ignorant to this as well, just didn't know. But I hear Dallas Safari Club. I presumably thought, okay, it's they do stuff around Dallas or in Texas, but that's not the case. The Dallas Safari Club, there is conservation efforts going on literally around the world uh, that stems from the Dallas Safari Club and their partners, and that's a, an important message. And they work they work internationally. Uh, they have a lobbyist that works for them in, in D.C. Obviously, you're familiar with all how that oh. works. But then I think one of the most remarkable people I've met in this mix has been uh, a, a lady that is the ambassador from Tanzania to the United States. She is fantastic. She's a brilliant lady, very smart. So it's a, a, a black African lady, obviously, from Tanzania that just gives you this compelling um, story about how hunting is beneficial for Tanzania and how it should be supported. Mm -hmm. Go argue against that. Yeah. You know, she's fantastic. Oh, it was, uh, I was over there this summer uh, with my son. And, you know, they find out you're on, you know, the lights, whatever. Hey, can we say hi in camp or whatever? So, you know, one of the ministers. It's like almost 25% of their tourism industry you know, yeah. is, is hunting because it's it's much less impact because the people are, you know, it, it's not as many people as the regular tourism industry, but they're going and spending real money there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know what I mean? So it, it's, uh, they're like, no, we need more hunting, not yeah. less hunting. Yeah. 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 So it, it's been important. Yeah, yeah, they're spending real money that is making real impact in yeah. their area. Yeah. yeah, and it matters to them, and it's fantastic because, like I said, she's extremely eloquent, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, highly educated lady, and just brilliant person. It's fun to hear give those reports. It's, yeah. it's great. 
Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, uh, we can get back to the show now unless there's anything else you want to say to our listeners in regard to the Dallas Safari Club conservation field ethos or Hornady in general. I'm good, man. Just having yeah. a good time, you know? Excellent. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming, Don. I really pleasure, appreciate your time. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for all that you do on behalf of conservation, firearm owners, especially in the United mm-hmm. States, because you're a great voice and a great face to the, the message that we're all trying to put forth. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody out there, hopefully you enjoyed this episode with special guest Don Jr. We really appreciate his time coming through here. And like he mentioned, if you're out there and there's somebody that you can mentor to get them outdoors, to get them into the firearm world, to get them hunting, you got to do it. They'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one, guys.